Hey guys, so I am going to use this as my video diary. So I don't know how long the series is going to last and hopefully by the time that I upload these videos, I'll be over what ails me. So in order to get out some of my frustration, I just need to talk. And so I'm going to time myself on my phone for five minutes. Whenever this timer rings, the video ends and that's just that for the day. So today is September 4th, 2013 and I am feeling very forgotten. Um. Things aren't always as they appear. And I know when some of you guys click on YouTube, it's for this enlightening experience of or finding something funny and something to take your mind off of what you may be going through or just for entertainment purposes. But I think sometimes you guys need to realize that life exists outside of the computer. And think people, the people you see and you watch and you term gurus, which I don't like that term, not applied to me. They go through things. I am battling for my life right now. I can't even explain the way I feel inside. And everybody's all, oh, well, you accomplished so much. You have all of these degrees and you made it. You, you know, you're big and, and you just don't understand. So I had wanted to take a step back from social media because I was losing myself into someone else. And I had known this person for 10 years. And it's a long story. Let's <laughs> problem number one in my life right now. I am 26. I am originally from Chicago, Illinois, but I reside in Charleston, South Carolina. I'm over a thousand miles away from anybody remotely close to being in my blood relative. How did I get here? <laughs> I was catfished. And that's a story for a whole nother video, but let's just say I was catfished and I fell in love with the person and they're from here from Charleston South Carolina and so when I went on to college I wanted to pick a school close to here to be near them at this time I didn't know I was being catfished so I ended up in school in Georgia years passed um, me and that person ended up living together in Atlanta and that was that I helped them get into school, get their degree, and all of that. Their mom ended up getting diagnosed with cancer. And so we ended up breaking up a little bit before I graduated, but I knew we would get back together. And so I decided I would come here for graduate school. And so I did. And I'm really close to my family and I'm sure you guys know that by watching the Am I Really Black video where you guys saw my family. But it's also a comfort zone at home. So anyways, I'm here. Me and that person ended up getting back together when I moved back here. And we were together for about a year and then we broke up in 2010 for good. Shortly after that, they left and they went to live in Milwaukee, which is kind of close to my hometown. <laughs> and um, during that breakup time, it was really bad for me. 
I lost about 30 pounds in one month, if not more than that. And so I decided I needed to go home because I was in such a black hole that I couldn't get out on my own. So I went home for a month and I regrouped and I came back and I sought therapy. And I strongly recommend people seek therapy. If you need help, please seek it. And so during my time in therapy, I was able to get over and cope with some of those issues that plagued me. And so now, I guess that's it. Mm. Bye guys. Mm. I didn't want to leave it like that. I'll talk for a little bit longer. They're probably going to be 10 minute videos. But in therapy, I sought help and I was able to work through some of my demons and get better. And so, anyways, I ended up graduating with my master's, even though I initially came down here for a PhD. And I enrolled in another degree program to complete my second master's. So, problem number one is that I now have a Bachelor of Science, a Master of Science, and I'm completing my second Master's of Science in another field, and I'm applying for jobs, and I am being told that I'm overqualified, and it becomes the most disheartening thing that you can hear. And it's way worse than being underqualified. Oh, under I feel like underqualified, you can fix. You can always add something else to you, to your repertoire, to your life, to your character. But it's hard. You cannot take away education. And there's just nothing that you can do to take away it. And so, everywhere I applied, I've been told I'm overqualified. Sometimes they won't even give me an interview to give me a chance to express how I really want the job. And then they tell me I'll get bored and won't even give me the opportunity to prove myself. So I'm stuck. It's like, what do you do from here? And you try to apply for higher positions, but they require you to have some experience. I'm being told I'm overqualified for things that I haven't never done in my life. That I've only sat in a classroom and learned about. And so, the job that I did have was a work-study job because I was still in school full-time. And at my school, you're not allowed to work full-time and go to school full time. And so I had to wait until I was done with my classes. So now for the most part, I am done with my degree. All I have to do is finish writing and that's it. But for the time being, I'm kind of stuck here in South Carolina. So now I have no job, which means no income other than YouTube so when I wanted to take a step back from YouTube financially I couldn't because it's all I have to live on right now granted it's not as much as y'all may think and it's not even enough to pay my bills but I just keep hoping and keep praying something will come along and I do babysit and other little odds and end jobs in the meantime. So, while I'm going through all of this, I have been seeking therapy to see if that would help me again. But it's just getting harder and harder to just even make it out to bed some days. And I go to church. And I believe in God and I read my word and I pray. I pray faithfully. But I feel forgotten. As much good as I do. And 
as much as I try to help other people in their times of need, I feel like I've forgotten about me and God has forgotten about me. And I start to feel that my prayers are just falling on deaf ears. And so my soul has grown weary. And so today I posted a message on my Facebook page and I'll share what it said. And I'm not going to edit these videos because I just, I don't got the time to. But I had been saying that I, you know, I'm a person that wears my heart on my sleeve. So how I feel is how I express. Sometimes I do make hair videos and it's not how I feel. And sometimes people can tell. And the moment when somebody was able to tell through my front, I couldn't take it no more. Somebody noticed that I wasn't me in my video and they commented about it. And that was when I decided that I wanted to take a break because I didn't want anybody to know. So anyways, the post I made today, it said, I really, I really do want to be happy again. And I'm trying to figure out how, how the conflict between heart and mind when you've been hurt so badly will make one crazy. I'm not the same girl anymore and pain has changed me. And so after I posted that, I got some messages um, in my inbox saying that I was so down and um, I don't know, pretty much like I was dampening their mood. And so I made another post today saying that I just wasn't going to post anything on my Facebook fan page anymore. Like I'm, I'm just done. I just. I don't have it in me anymore and so earlier this week all while I was going to counseling the therapist kept saying she was worried about me and she wanted me to go on medication and I just refused to go on medication I did it for a month and that was during the month where I lost all of that weight because I felt so numb. I wouldn't eat. When I did eat, I threw up. I had no appetite. I was just there. And so I didn't want to feel like that again. I'd rather feel hurt than to feel nothing. And so I told her I wasn't going to, I don't know. I told her I wasn't going to go on medication. So the, the worse I felt, the more scared I got because she kept saying that she was worried about me so then i became worried about me so i looked up the symptoms of suicide and i fit a lot of those symptoms and the more i ran down the list of the symptoms the better i felt and i just began to cry out because i didn't want to be able to get to the point where suicide was an option for me. And I got so scared that it was heading there for me. And somehow I cried myself to sleep. And the next day I went in and I talked to her about it. But I decided I wasn't going to go to therapy anymore because it wasn't helping and it took too much energy for me to get up and actually go and so this past weekend somebody the same person that catfished me basically kicked me while i'm down and out and feeling the way that i'm feeling and just made the situation a million times worse and so now I'm all alone in a place where I have no one to turn to and I just don't know what to do. I just feel so forgotten 
so hurt. It just full of pain. And I just don't want to feel like this anymore. I just don't know how much longer I can take this. And I ran across a quote that talked about suicide. And I said, it happens when the pain becomes more than the ability to cope or something like that. And I'm just praying God gives me enough coping skills that it, it won't happen.